Yes, I think the U.S. market will move to AMV. If you had asked me that, you know, two or three years ago, I think I would have answered very differently. Um, but there's definitely a different mood in the country, um, and there's a number of drivers that are, are really behind that. Um, and those drivers include, there's been some major shifts in, um, in the dynamics of the market itself. Um, there's a significant consolidation of the, the issuing community. So instead of having to deal with you know, tens of thousands of banks, there's, it's highly, highly consolidated within a few, which makes uh, the cost and, and the coordination efforts much simpler. Um, the cost of the chips themselves have declined. Edgar Dunn and Company's done business cases around the world, and including the U.S., uh, since the, eight, the early 80s uh, in Europe. And we first started doing business cases in Europe. The cost of a chip, incremental cost, was about $8. Uh, it's now down to sub-dollar and, and falling uh, with the U.S. market. Once it decides to implement chip, it'll fall even further. The cost of the terminals is declining, and they're already um, being included. EMV is included in many of the terminals that are being shipped and deployed in the U.S. It just requires the software to implement them. Um, many of the players within the market, the larger players, are international in scope, so they've already had to deal with a lot of the issues, and this includes issuers, uh, the acquirers, some of the large merchants, the big processors. If they're doing business in Canada or Mexico, they've already had to deal with chip-related issues, so they're already familiar with the issues and in many cases have made adjustments to some, to some of the platforms that they have. So there's a lot of shift in the cost basis of the, the dynamics of the business case that are all moving in a positive direction. At the same time, fraud itself is growing, and as the rest of the world migrates, the fraud, pressure on fraud in the U.S. will continue to mount. Uh, we have, you know, chip to the north of us, chip to the south of us, and we're the last big payment market for uh, targeting fraud. In spite of the fact that we have significant investment in fraud detection measures. Um, there's also a major shift in the beneficiaries of the business case. Historically, the beneficiaries of a business case were largely the issuers because they bore the brunt of most of the fraud. Um, but today, because a large portion of the fraud, over 50% of the fraud in the U.S., has migrated to the online channel, merchants bear the liability for that part portion of the fraud, for the most part. Uh, so they now have a significant stake in the game. In addition, the cost of PCI compliance and concerns about failures of PCI compliance and the effects of that on their brands is another large motivation factor for the merchants. So there are, the U.S. market may be actually the first market that um, the merchants are leading the effort for conversion to chip. Um, in, sp in spite of all of these, I think, um, drivers for towards that, I think it's important to note that, that we've, made some pro we've made movement towards CHIP. Um, certain issuers are already beginning to issue uh, cards for their segments of their portfolio that uh, are heavy travelers and using them abroad. But there's a high risk that, that we will stagnate or stall at a certain low level of implementation unless there's some level of industry coordination because it requires both movement on the issuing side with the cards coordinated with an a merchant rollout and deployment of the terminals. Um, and unless those are coordinated, the industry won't move forward. I don't believe that the U.S. would be implementing an obsolete technology. In fact, I believe the opposite is true, that EMV provides the foundation for the roadmap for the future of payments. EMV provides the core of the dynamic data uh, capabilities that are needed to protect the transaction in the physical point of sale world, in the online environment, in the mobile environment.
It can also be leveraged to protect um, online ch banking channels and other banking channels by providing a strong two-factor authentication methodology. There are technologies out there today that are in use that um, have windows on the cards that show the dynamic data that the consumer can then enter into the online purchase environment similar to the way that we enter our CVV transaction code uh, today in an online environment. This just gives it a dynamic code that protects it in the same way that EMV protects the point of sale transaction. Um, it is very important, though, that EMV is in, implemented in, across all channels. Uh, it should be implemented in the point of sale environment, the ATM environment, the online environment where we have over 50% of the fraud problem today, um, and the mobile environment as well. Um, and it must be, it needs to be implemented globally and the elimination, it must be, the mag stripe must be eliminated in order to really realize the benefits of EMV.